Test one. Sassafras, which I like to use because of the, the orange color underneath. So um, I'm going to pass around a couple that I, that I started. And uh, you know, I'll, end up, I'll end up throwing an electric tea light in there. Um, I started doing this with my grandkids a couple of years ago, and I found that they, they do pretty good at craft shows. Matter of fact, the, the, the one we did, the Market on the Ridge, that's really all they sold was these. <coughs> How much do you sell them for? Um, the smaller ones were like $15. I really, I really don't put much time into finishing them. I, that's how they look when I get done. Um, I used to finish them, and I used to use um, a spray shellac, just something, a few coats of that. But I ended up having to work harder, you know, so, you know. Because um, by the time you get all that stuff on there, you got to come back and sand the, sand the, um, the tops again to get those to finish the fit right. Um, so I'll, I'll usually take a, a log and a look at it and determine what's the top and bottom. And based on the, you know, the hand out there, I'll, I'll put that in a spur truck, live center, turn it tatted, and end up with a piece that's like this before I flip it over and chuck it up. I've, I've kind of uh, done a, a few steps, I think we jumped to about four here, in the interest of just getting done in time for the pen turning and all that other stuff. So um, here I've, I've got to the point where I've Round this, I'm going to just touch it up one more time because I did this last night. It could be a little bit out of round from this point. Everything is all wet wood. I, don't, I really don't turn kiln dry wood. I don't do segmented stuff. I just pick up stuff off the, off the yard and go to town. So. Um, I'm, I'm to the point here where I've got this to the diameter I want related to the top. I've roughed this up. We're going to turn this a little bit more later on. I guess once I put this on, I won't be able to hear me. I'm just going to start, and if I see anybody with questions, I'll, I'll stop and answer or try to answer. I guess the one more thing is I was going to talk about tools. I use the tools that I have. You're going to use the tools, your favorite tools. So if I'm using a screw versus something else, it's all, you know, just substitute. I didn't really mention tools in there. Just substitute, you know, what you're going to, if you're, if you're going to try anything like this.
a little bit of a tape around here that I'll match um, in the recess on the base. I'm going to use a pencil to just kind of um, get a general mark of where this is going to land. And another thing I'm going to do while it's in position, which I don't mention on here, is this I'm going to mark on here where the two grains align or where it's aligned. I want to put that together and turn it again. Okay, so at this point I'll just uh, part this off.
Not yet, because I'm going to have to put it back oh, on there and drill it out. And we'll, I will get it off eventually. Put the bevel on there as well, and eventually this will go together. I'm going to blend in this top here. Oops, together. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm trying my best to realign the grain here. It looks pretty close. It'll work.
Okay. I could do a little bit better job of smoothing this out. Um, at this point, um, I've got this, this <coughs> diameter here, um, the resulting bevel, and the, the very last part of the thing when I go back to carve this out, I'm going to use about a, a third to, you know, two thirds or, or so if this was one, then this would be a half or a third by the time I get to the top of the stem. Mm -hmm. And I'll use either carved by hand or a Dremel or something to, to make a radius um, to end up with the stem that you guys saw being passed around. So um, while I've got this on here at this point, I'm going to look at where my face is going to be. And um, certainly not going to be here. Hang on, let me get that top. Yep. All right, so it's not going to be in that knot. Um, you, you basically going to rotate it around and see where you're going to get the widest area to work with. So if that's where that is. Um, I can figure out how to lock this. I would lock this. What do you lock? Butt here. Doesn't give me a whole lot of. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'll just. You're, you're not but at this point, I can. I'm going to go ahead and run some some um, holes in for the mouth. I think I can. I think I can hold Chuck, Chuck, Chuck right here. And what I'm, what I'm trying, trying to do here, here is, um, is um, I want to leave some leave bark, some bark to, work to work with. with. Um, um, but I want to run this in straight into the axis. axis. Could you, could you, could you back, back the chunk off and turn it? And then lock it. Pretty much, pretty much turn it. Well, I got some. That's a hollow. I mean, I can, I mean, do, I can that. do that. Yeah, but this, this, I'm not, I'm not comfortable, comfortable doing this. Doing this. I generally, I generally run, run that down, down you know, to, to about just past, just past that depth on the lowest part of the part of the park. park. Don't forget to drill that hole first, Dave. Is this self ejecting? Yes. I'll actually try to get as much out of here with a gouge as I can. And I'm going I'm to probably do that if I've got the room. Just so that when I'm clearing the chips off from the drill, I don't have to work that as hard.
put that on the other side. <laughs> I'm drilling to the depth of um, um, the inside here, so I'm going to hollow this whole thing out. And this is my fancy measuring stick right here. So I want to go a quarter to a half of an inch lower than the mouth. And I just eyeball that and then kind of transfer that over to here. And I'm probably a quarter inch onto the stem right here to get to the depth I want to go. The reason you didn't drill for um, you have to you clear out a lot of chips when you drill, right? So that takes a, a while. If I can get in there with, it's quicker to, to gouge it out for me. Um, I, I felt a little nervous about it, so I thought I'm not going to chance it. You know, when I'm at <laughs> home, you know, you just go right. So, so I'm going to drill a little bit more than usual because I'll usually hollow that out a little bit more. Turn down the speed. Not that low. Okay, now I can remove the tail stop. Kind of new to me, so there might be some learning curve and nervousness on this tool. If, it, if I can't get it to work, I'll go back to the way I used to do it. But um, is that a Monroe Howler? It's a yeah, it's a smaller one of the of his tool. Oops, I got it. Oh, I, I was going to. I thought it was falling. Yeah. Was, <laughs> does this have a reverse? Yes. Um, okay. yeah. So I made sure that I screwed the, the chuck down. The chuck down here because I don't want to spin it off. Hopefully the connection between the uh, adapter and this is good. But we'll, we'll feel it. We'll find out here in a minute. So <laughs> this, you got to leave a little room for, for that. Put some glass in the bottom of it. Glass? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We can do that. I'm more worried about the whole thing coming off, right? So, but I do this in reverse so I can see what I'm doing, because otherwise I'm kind of coming around and it's sort of blind. Um, I cut the holes in here for two reasons. 
before I hollow it out. Um, it, it's a way to get the chips to get out of there, mm. you know, so I'm not constantly blowing it out. Um, it's also a depth gauge. Once I see I've broken through, I can, I can start to see what my wall thickness is on those and what I have to do. Eventually, you get this far enough down here, you're looking at the shadow inside, you can see the bottom of the bowl. You probably know from all those yeah. voided things that you do. So, this is, for me, this is a learning curve about up and down, you know, and where, and where to get it. So, I might have to fuss with it a little bit, but hopefully I'll get, get it working here. Does this cutter will load up very bad or it not? It does, usually does, but it seems to blow out when I'm hitting it right. Okay. But it is lower than that. Do you find that uh, when you use this? Uh, no, nope, I don't have you one. Don't use, oh, I thought you did. No, I don't have one. <laughs> That's what I was asking. <laughs> place to put a light bulb if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Where the knot was? Yeah. So that's interesting. And people will look at that and go, that's cool, you know. They, they love that kind of stuff. They love the features that you get out of it. Yes. What's that? Oak art. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to um, not really get a catch. So 
once it once you get a start to get a catch, it'll turn like this, and then the the guard pulls it off the cut. So it's nice, and it seems to be working for me today. I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to get a close up of this. It's hard to tell though. Yeah. It's full. Yeah. Once once I get done, I'm the same thing. I clear those chips out of there. I don't want to get that stuff yeah. glued to the, the cutter. Yeah. Ready. So I'm looking at this, I'm seeing I'm a little high here, a little thickness is going to come out, out of this room. I need to just keep progressing. I'm actually going to go to this easy wood tool for now because um, it's a little quicker at the bottom anyway. Um, and I'll go right back and go. the mouth. They got a pretty flat bottom because you want a flat bottom for the, the fake candle to sit on. Um, Could you just need to drill the mouth and the eyes after you hollow that? Yeah, you got to clear those chips out. You know, this is, if the chips come out, you can keep going. You don't necessarily have to stop every, you know, few minutes to clear them out because you're not cutting wood when you're cutting kind of chips. You see, you know, if I did that, when they get to that, they would be breaking out more. Breaking out? Grilling the eyes and the uh, mouth first. But you talk about that to catch or whatever. Right. So I got some pretty high spots in there. I'm going to continue with this, I think. Otherwise, I can bring this camera back here. <coughs> this way I think I can do it from the top. Okay. Okay. I prefer to lock it down when I do it with. Just a note about the inside. I leave it. I don't do anything inside there. And 
when you look at a pumpkin that you've carved out, it's all gnarly, it's all stringy. That's that's what it's about. So you don't do anything, and it makes it that much easier to get done quicker. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Put some put some uh, pumpkin seeds in there or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes we use um, um, some kind of bit, you know, like an aggressive, maybe a saber tooth bit. I have a few saber tooth bits to do some of this. With this sassafras, as dry as it is, I can probably, if this wasn't loaded up, use this uh, just to embellish the eye. And I'm just going to do that because it's going to be a little quicker for the demo. Trying to get, get some, some of that loading stuff out of there. So I just look at this guy and I just start to come out with it. I want to, I want to pull out the, the, the good, uh, the wood, to make it, um, the emphasis on the features that I want to put in here. Okay. So I'm going to start with this guy. Okay. 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 This guy right here, um, I'll use the light. Once again, I want to find this grain here. If I, if I did my marker right. Here. So I just want to put a couple, couple marks, marks in here. Just so when I line it up the last time. time. Uh, it dries the same, same way. So you know, there's going to be shrinkage, gonna be shrinkage. And, and they should they shrink should <coughs> relatively, relatively the same, same way. way. But I, but I put this, put on, this on here and leave and it, leave it on. on. Set, set it aside. It was really wet. I set it aside, set aside for quite a few days. And then, and, um, um, you know, you know um, I might have, I might to, have to come back, come back and pop this off and do a little sanding to get it to fit so it can be removed easier. Once again, so again, sanding, sanding part, part, I would, I would, I would, I would put, this put this together. together. I, think I, I think I would have done, done that before, before I took this off the hollow. I would have sanded sand around, around here. Get up get to, up to in this area right here because, because all, all of this stuff, stuff I'm going to cut away. away. So, so I generally just take a tangent line to some point over here. And so this diameter, or this diameter, I want to be about a half to a third diameter. What I'm, what I'm cutting. And I'll and use, I'll use uh, the saber tooth bits to do this. I can, I've, I've even done this by uh, a flex all carving knife, you know, just to get most of the material away because the, you know, the bits, you know, you're going to kind of, you're cutting probably, you know, 80% of that bevel away to get to that portion right there. Nobody can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. We, well. So, yeah. I don't think uh, well, I, I have the time the to really, area. you know, show that. 
think you can get the idea about that, but you know, you end up with a curved stem. I don't, um, I'll say on that a little bit just to get the fuzzies off. But once again, when you look at a stem from a pumpkin, it's got, it's got fuzzies on it. It's got irregularities on it. So I don't really make that, you know, smooth, beautiful, smooth and, 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 you know, anything like that. I just leave it gnarly, you know. And, and I'll put those together. I'll turn the tenon off. So I think I have enough time to do that. Put a lot of pressure on here. It would, it would split that. You gotta watch your the bottom, you know. If I, I try to leave enough room so I can put a recess back in here, so I'm sitting on the outer edge when it's sitting on the table or something. But if you go too far, you're going to end up with a hole in the bottom. Which so what really? I mean, there's a hole in the bottom. On that uh, page that I passed around, there was um, one of the pictures shows legs on one of the. That's a little bit of a Rebecca de Groot influence on me, you know, so, um, but I, I uh, sold that to a person who is related to the, the people that do the corn maze in New Salem, and she was going to give that to them as a, as a pre present for decorations in their, in their maze, so that was kind of cool. Then I can't, you know, push it in and out. So. That's about it. I mean, you know, I, I would sand a little bit more than what I'm doing here. I don't think anybody wants to sit here and watch people sand. So. I guess we'd have to get the lights out.
had this be you know, effective. But that's basically what, what I end up with, you know, once I've done this part right here. So. Anybody have any questions for Dave?